Hello aspirants, looking at current affairs for 24th Feb, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these nine. We we'll look at them in detail. The first one, US tightens H-1B approval process. IT firms worried. So this is regarding US announcement now that fresh measures are being introduced to tighten the scrutiny of H-1B visa petitions. So here H-1B visa applications when they come forth, there will be mandatory requirement of fresh documents to be provided by workers at third party work sites. So what happens is that workers, individual visas are provided to workers, but then Indian IT firms when they send their employees with H-1B visa to work at American companies that have contracts with them. So in these cases, what happens is the company sometimes they also put them in third party work sites. So this would become stringent now. So you know if you are if you will have, if a worker is provided with h1 visa he will have to associate himself with a particular project so each individual visa would be for a particular project and it would be approved only for the duration of the project so that will be the requirement now also this policy has been criticized by nascom india's top software body saying that this is at odd with the american administration's steps taken to cut regulation and red tapism so there will be more paperwork required here as such when, when H-1B visa processing takes place is the point with the put forth. So it's, that's how it is going to affect India. So here you can see the details are provided. So the focus is on third party work sites. So since bulk of H-1B workers are deployed in third party companies, so the scrutiny on them as such would increase. So here you can see evidence would be needed to be produced such as contracts, technical documents to provide that niche job are indeed available and the worker will be employed in such jobs at the third party companies for which Americans are not available for hiring. So that's when it would be allowed. Exact dates and places of employment with all the third party companies will need to be provided. So it, all details would have to be provided. This is what the paperwork is all about. Documents should be submitted establishing employer-employee relationships with all the firms where the employee will be working. So in general, three-year visas are issued, but the period may also be reduced provided how much uh, schedule of work avail is available. So that much duration visa, H-1B visa would be provided. So even for visa extension, same scrutiny would be applicable. Then next is Lokpal appointments, meeting scheduled for March 1, Center tells Supreme Court. So this is regarding the appointment of Lokpal. So you should know about Lokpal and Lokayukta Act of 2013. We will discuss the whole journey is provided here, the timeline. It was since 1963 that the idea had been first floated, but no steps could be taken. Even first ARC recommended setting up Lokpal. As such, the Lokpal bill was introduced from in 1968 until 2011. It had been introduced in parliament eight times but was never passed. Even the second ARC recommended Lokpal to be established without delay. Finally, in 2011, the Lokpal bill introduced finally resulted into 2013 Lokpal and Lokayukta bill passed by the parliament. So this is the act of 2013 now which provides for establishment of a Lokpal at the central level and Lokayukta at the state level to inquire into allegations of corruption against public fun functionaries as such. So here the jurisdiction is also shown that who would come under the scrutiny. So here it is Prime Minister, Ministers, Members of Parliament, Group A, B, C, D, Officers of Central Government, any body corporation as such which is financed by the central government or controlled by it. So that is the Lokpal at the central level. Now how would the Lokpal be appointment? So there would be a selection committee. So there are selection committees you can see for various bodies which are shown here. So for Lokpal it is Prime Minister, Chief Justice of India, Speaker of Lok Sabha, Leader of Opposition in Lok Sabha and an eminent jurist. So this is the five member body which would select the members of the Lokpal. But then it is provided even if there is a vacancy in the committee, appointment can be made. But presently the status is that there is no leader of the opposition in the Lok Sabha because this po this position has been defined as that opposition which gets majority of the uh, votes as such and it should be at least 10% of the total votes put. But in present Lok Sabha, 16th Lok Sabha, there is no leader of the opposition because Congress party which is the single largest opposition 
required party in opposition he did not get the required 10% votes so that is why this leader of the opposition since it is not there the post that is why the present government bjp government has not formed the lokpal selection committee and that is why lokpal appointments have not been done so far in, in april 2017 supreme court also ruled that this argument of government cannot be justified because the leader of the opposition what the government argued is that there is a position post of leader of the opposition in the act of 2013 this position has to be replaced with single largest opposition party so once this amendment takes place only then we can go ahead with it but even for the case of cvc as we just saw leader of the opposition post is required so here also this requirement was also not fulfilled but in this case the government took the single largest party the amendment was done and the single largest party member was taken and appointment done but in case of lokpal nothing has come forth so far so this is the point and the supreme court in april 2017 said that this is not the justification so even the present law cannot be put on hold merely because uh, a better law is being looked into means some changes are required so this judgment said that you have to go ahead with the appointment of lokpal but still despite this judgment no progress has taken place on lokpal appointments and that is why a common cause contempt petition as such has been filed as such now in this case the central government is giving its view point before the supreme court in which it said that government will have the leader of the single largest party in opposition will who will attend a meeting scheduled on march 1 to discuss the appointments for lokpal so it's called anti corruption ombudsman so this is the term ombudsman which is used in scandinavian countries so here in the european scandinavian countries you have this ombudsman which looks into grievances against the elected and appointed authorities in government so here then five members in this selection committee are prime minister lok sabha speaker cgi and single largest opposition party leader in attendance then this is regarding the whole i whole fight for setting up lokpal so the lokpal selection committee formation has been the contention point of contention but then the lokpal as such once established will consist of a chairperson and maximum of eight members 50% of which would be judicial of judicial background also 50% overall should be from sc st obc minorities and women and selection of lokpal members the committee we have been discussing for so long so it will have a jurisdiction over all levels of public servants including pm but then lokpal can't initiate any probe against pm without consent of two third of its members also there can be no probe against the prime minister on complaints related to international relations security public order atomic energy and space so this is there also no prior sanction is required for launching prosecution in cases probed by lokpal or investigated at its instance so it will be uh, lokpal itself would be empowered to attach provisionally any ill gotten property even while prosecution is pending so subject to confirmation by court as such also it will have its own inquiry wing for preliminary investigation and also if primary facia case is established lokpal can refer the case to investigating agencies like the cbi and others so this will be its power so it will have an independent prosecution wing also so here you can see directorate of prosecution has been established under the act also maximum punishment for corruption has come to 10 years now and it is mandatory under the lokpal and lokayukta act for every state to set up a lokayukta within a year of this act coming into force then next is Pakistan on watch list for terror financing so this is regarding financial action task force which we had discussed earlier to the plenary meet which took place here as such it has been decided that Pakistan would be put on the grey list so it would be subject to direct monitoring and intense scrutiny by international cooperative review group on terror financing and further review would take place in june 2018 already we have seen that pakistan had been under this list in the grey list from 2012 to 2015 and now in 2018 it has been put into this list again though fatf decision is taken by consensus 
So this consensus can be broken by at least two members disagreeing. There are 37 members here. China was supporting Pakistan, but then other members, though initially they supported, but then nobody came with China and the consensus came that Pakistan should be put in this green list. Also, this initiation was taken by four nominating countries, US, UK, Germany and France. So this is the action taken. So Pakistan will have to put up a compliance document, furnish fresh reports to International Cooperative Review Group. And this review will take place in June 2018 at the next session of FATF. And then it will, the further decision would be taken whether Pakistan continues in this gray list or is removed. So what is expected of Pakistan is that it cracks down on terror groups which have been banned by UN Security Council which are functioning within its territory. So this is there. So it will, because of this, it been included in the grey list. It will face financial strictures, rating downgrades by international banking and credit rating agencies. And this will continue till it cracks down on its terror groups. So this is FAT, a Financial Action Task Force, which is an intergovernmental body set up by G7 in 1989 to combat money laundering and terror financing. Then next is elections to 58 Rajya Sabha seats on March 23. So biennial elections means once in two years elections take place in Rajya Sabha. So 58 Rajya Sabha seats are vacant from 16 states and also one seat is going for Baipol from Kerala. So these elections would take place. The announcement has come from the election commission. Also, you should know these are indirect elections. So, as in the case of Lok Sabha, direct elections take place. People vote for members of Lok Sabha. In case of Rajya Sabha, the members of Vidhan Sabha means the state legislative assembly. Members of each state legislative assembly elect members to Rajya Sabha. So, number of seats allotted to each state and that way elections take place. So, Vidhan Sabha members are elected by the people and these elected representatives of the people mem elect members to Rajya Sabha. So this is how it takes place. So here we are seeing few seats become vacant. So actually Rajya Sabha, one third member retire every six years. So it's each member has a term of six years. Rajya Sabha is a continuous body. It never gets dissolved. One third members retire every six years, every two years. So actually the term is six years. So every two years, one third member retire. And every two years we see Rajya Sabha elections taking place. Total strength of Rajya Sabha is 250. Actually, 232 are elected members. 12 are nominated. 238 are elected members. So this general quality behind Rajya Sabha, you should know. So here you can see Rajya Sabha cannot be dissolved. One third of its members retire every two years. And each member has a six-year term. Rajya Sabha itself does not have a term of five years. The way Lok Sabha has a term of five years. Rajya Sabha is a permanent body. Then next is DD Air staff to work in PIB2. So Doordarshan and All India Radio, these uh, officials from here would now work under Press Information Bureau. Too. So this is the order from the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. So the Indian Information Service officers who are working here, so they would have to work even for PIB now. So this is the publicity arm of the government, press information bureau. So they would be working with the ministries, handle the publicity of various ministries. And in addition to their work at Doordarshan and All India Radio. So this is also called as a conflict of, uh, no, conflict of interest as such too, because they have to work independently at Doordarshan, All India Radio, and then they would be working under the ministers as such too. So Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting is Smriti Irani. She took over in July 2017. And it is said the main genesis of this reshuffle, Indian Information Service officers being appointed additionally for PIB are because in October 2017, when World Bank upgraded India's ranking ease of doing business, this story was not covered by Doordarshan. So the reason for this was given that PIB did not give the details and this was because of manpower shortage in PIB. So that is when now this decision is taken that members from Doordarshan and All India Radio would be working for PIB as well. So this is the news. Then next is US shared intelligence to fix Pakistan diplomat in terror plot. So actually digital intelligence was shared by US security agencies because of which India was able to fix Amir Zubair Siddiqui 
a person working with Pakistan High Commission in Sri Lanka, we had discussed him yesterday too, that the NIA, National Investigation Agency, has initiated steps. It has named it in the charge sheet as such too now. So in this case of, uh, of having a conspiracy frame against India, uh, planning to attack nuclear installations, defense establishments, etc. in India. So in this case, actually digital intelligence was shared by US. So NIA had approached US and other foreign countries under mutual legal assistance treaty so that digital evidence can be provided by them because Pakistan diplomat had sent mails and even Facebook was used. So these visual elements from sent via these have were procured as such. So these extracts of these emails used as such have been put forth and because of this intelligence NIA has been able to charge sheet this former Pakistan High Commission official. Then next is concerned about new Indian tariffs US. So US administration has said that India US strategic relations are strong but commercial issues are still there. So strategically India finds mentioned positively in Trump administration's national security strategy which we had discussed when it was announced as some time back. So here we are seeing that security issues is fine but with respect to economic issues, commercial issues. So in US is presently also concerned about the new round of tariffs which have been announced in the present budget by India. So this is there also earlier we have seen President Trump talking about high tariffs on high end motorcycles like uh, uh, Royal Enfield uh, motorcycles as such, they have 100% tariff on them. So this is also an issue which US has raised. Then trade imbalance is there in favor of India, but recently it has reduced because energy import by India from US, shale gas, etc. has also increased. So, but still the trade is in favor of India. So here is the details are also provided. So this is goods exported from India in financial year 2017 goods imported by India so here you can see there is a huge deficit in favor of India and this is farm exports and farm imports so of course overall the trade deficit is in favor of India and against US so this is there. then next is the next big question a hard or soft Brexit so Britain it is, seems that it is it could go for a softer exit from European Union. So the Labour Party as such had called for a hard exit, completely moving out of the custom union of European Union. But now it is seen that there are differences and US Prime Minister and British Prime Minister Theresa May, she is going to give another speech on the government's Brexit strategy. So further clarification would come forth. So a shift in policy stance may also take place. So officially it has been announced that government will exit the customs union. So it, then it will have to have, you know, separate joint trade deals as such with non-EU states. So this was the announcement, but maybe it continues to stay within it because many industry, industry leaders wish that EU rules are become applicable. So like, for example, the auto industry. So auto industry supply chain is heavily integrated with Europe. So in this case, Britain has said we are, will adhere to EU rules on a voluntary basis. So this has been indicated by Britain. So that is why even European Union has been clear that, you know, uh, as such, European Union's capital is in Brussels. So it has repeatedly stressed that Britain would not be able to cherry pick the deal which it strikes with European Union because it's going to exit EU. So cherry picking means your choice, what you want, what you don't want. So the other side also has a say in it. So this is regarding Brexit, Britain's exit from the European Union, the 28 nation block. So it will become a 27 nation block once EU exits. So it started off in March 2017 when Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty of European Union was triggered by British Prime Minister Theresa May, indicating UK's intention to withdraw. So it's a two year time frame which is required for the entire process to be completed. So the negotiations are going on. It's March 2019, finally, that the transition deal would be ratified as such and Britain will leave EU. Then next is leaders break ground on Afghan section of Tabu. 
So TAPI stands for Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan and India. So this is TAPI gas pipeline which has been proposed. It's an ambitious multi-billion dollar gas pipeline which will ease energy deficits in South Asia. So gas rich Turkmenistan is from where the gas would be would be going out through this pipeline 1840 kilometer pipeline which would be laid down which will go through war ragged Afghanistan so there are security concerns too because it passes through Afghanistan then it will reach Pakistan and even India so Turkmenistan presently its oil its gas is exported here to China so it's heavily dependent on China as a market for its natural gas so because of this pipeline there will be diversification of its gas deliveries too which will be good for its politics as such too so that is also been highlighted by Turkmenistan also India will get benefit from this pipeline is dependent on Pakistan so if it's Pakistan's relation with India is also a concern in this because it is through Pakistan that the gas pipeline will reach India. So there are more concerns on this too. There is another pipeline, IPI pipeline, Iran, Pakistan, India pipeline. But since Iran is involved there, US is against this and Iran has sanctions on it too, international sanctions too. So that is why TAPI gas pipeline is another alternate which has been pushed by US as well. So here the TAPI gas pipeline is shown. This is the Dalatabad gas field of Turkmenistan from where it will enter into Afghanistan. You can see these are UN declared extreme risk zones in Afghanistan. Your landmines are laid. It will pass through this, reach Pakistan and then here in Fazilka in India. So this is the TAPI gas pipeline and the other pipeline. So this is shown here TAPI in green and this is the proposed Iran, Pakistan, India pipeline. So it will take oil from the South Pars gas field here. So gas from the South Pars gas field will flow from Iran to Pakistan and enter into India. So even in Pakistan we see this is the Baluchistan region where again terrorist groups are active. So And Afghanistan also is part of Tapi pipeline. So these are the huge concerns as such too with respect to the two pipelines. So they have progressed very slowly. So presently the news was that TAPI pipeline, the uh, Afghanistan segment as such has been you know, laid down, ceremony of groundbreaking at this Afghan section of the pipeline took place. So that is there where all four nation leaders, members were present. So these are the news items. Thank you.